I promised some time ago that I'd get around to doing a video, and here it is. I have received a lot of questions, some of which are unusual. Um, so here we go. I'm going to just run through them quickly and see what we've got. I'm going to start off with, uh, firstly I should say this, I've been on the road this year 25 cities since January the 3rd, and I am finally back home. Um, I'm actually moving my office in our own disarray, if you look over there, boxes and such everywhere. But anyway, um, so that is what I'm up to. Uh, but the first question I have is from Amar, all that Amar on Twitter, whose question is, organized sports, positives or negative toward development of social skills in children? And the reason this is in my first question is because it's what I've been talking about the last two conferences I've been at, one was in Barcelona on sports and the use of sports to help build communities and as a development tool for individuals. And the the conference, the IEG conference in Chicago, where they would I was talking about whether there really was CSR and how how sports should perhaps be used better. Um, by large corporations when they're doing their corporate social stuff. Anyway, so can, is it a positive or negative thing? You know, the reality is that, in my opinion, sports have been used to socialize boys and girls to know what it is to be a boy and a girl since the Industrial Revolution. It's, some people think it's a slightly Marxist view. But I, um, I see way too much that sports People think it's magic. People think that you throw a basketball out there or you roll the ball across the floor or you give a kid a racket and fat kids will become thin, indolent kids will become active, um, the shy kids will become confident. And there's just no evidence out there that that's the truth. Sports aren't magic. It doesn't matter what the sport is. People are magic, or at least they can be. I think we need to design our initiatives in sports to do very specific things. If you want them to help young people to understand better how to feed themselves, how to pick nutritious foods, how to resist the temptation to eat crap all the time, then you've got to create a program that does that. Because rolling a ball out there on its own won't do it. I know this because I played professional sports and uh, doing that didn't stop me from eating Twinkies. And only a great deal of self-control forces me to eat pears when I'd rather have cheesecake. Huh. Cheesecake. Anyway, so, uh, thanks, Amar. First question. Uh, I probably said it better in a video I did for one of the uh, conferences. So, um, let's take a quick look. With the Global Sports Forum, I'm probably looking forward to the fact that I am the sports person who's, I'm the anti sports person. And. I irritate people with the way that I talk about sport and and put its relative importance where it should be rather than on a pedestal. Um, and also, I think one of the things that, that I'm going to talk about is, is the fact that there is a great movement for, um, for sports as an intervention with young people. And I think as a psychologist that the science behind these interventions is se severely lacking. Uh, and so they have no hope of any sustainable success. And that's one of the things I want to kind of address. Uh, and that is in terms of diversity within sport, uh, using sport as a tool to stop people from committing crime or reducing obesity. All of these things um, are factors that we kind of throw willy-nilly into the mix, but we don't really think about any cohesive way to make sport really work. Second question, David Murphy. You brought out the geek in me. Uh, can Superman outrun the Flash? On the risk of never having a date again, I would say that there was a cartoon episode where this actually happened and they had a race around the world. Um, we never saw who won, um, but I would think it would be slightly depressing for Flash fans. Um, I'm not one of them, but uh, if he could be outrun by Superman, there's got to be something that somebody does better than him. Yeah. So that's my thoughts. Anyway, Rob Harrison, how old was I when I decided to become a psychologist? I talked about this on a Big Think video a while back, and I probably said it better then than I would say it now, and I'd also shaved for that. So, there you go. 
I think my guidance came from my mother. She was a doctor, and um, I used to watch her go on visits, because uh, in, in Britain, doctors actually visit you when you're sick. Um, and she used to go on visits, and I wouldn't go upstairs to see her doing medicine stuff with whoever was ill, but I would be downstairs. You know, this is when I was seven years old, and sat around in a room full of relatives who were very, very anxious, very, very scared, um, panicked about what was going on. Because if a doctor visits you, you're very sick. And I would watch my mother sit in the room and just, just be able to calm everybody down just by talking to them. You'd see the tension drop and release. And so this, for me, was amazing. You know, this was in 77, 78, maybe, and Star Wars was all the rage. And I literally spent my youth imagining, believing that my mother was a Jedi because she could talk to patients and be like, it's all right, you'll be able to cope. And I would see them just relax. And it wasn't that they thought the problems had gone away, but they, they were able to cope because my mom said so. And so that's my framework. I grew up thinking the best job in the world would be a Jedi. And being a psychologist is the closest thing I could get. Now we get to the personal questions. What kind of personality, this is from Nate, what kind of personality are you attracted to? I think it's an incredibly difficult question to answer. I like people who are uh, intelligent and compassionate. I like people who are outgoing, especially those who can compensate in purely social environments for the fact that I am not outgoing. But I also need someone who it doesn't have to be out all the time. I need someone who's an old soul, um, because I'm old. <laughs> yeah. I mean, for me, pers being quirky personality-wise is probably a plus, because I'm strange. Um, so yeah, you've got to be slightly odd, smarter than me, outgoing, but not oppressively so. And then beyond that, I'm pretty open, <laughs> pretty open. In the interest of real honesty, I have to say that in terms of personality, you have to be outgoing enough to come up and talk to me. And yet not one of those people who the first thing you say is, God, you're tall, or what size feet do you have? Or are you all in proportion? The truth is I need someone to actually come up and ask me out because we can be staring at each other all night and if you don't say anything to me, yeah, uh, we won't ever meet. Just so you know. Oh, here's one from Carlton, um, which is from Twitter. Uh, I was a little surprised by this because I just, I don't know what, I don't know where this came from. But anyway, the question is, uh, do I only like white men? Uh, I'm assuming we mean in a dating sense here. Um, which is odd. And the answer, the quick answer is no, I, I don't only like white men. Um, I'm just wondering where that comes from, because I don't think anybody's ever seen anybody that I've dated. I've, I've probably read one blog post about four years ago, three years ago, that said anything about someone who I was dating at the time. And even that wasn't accurate. Um, but yeah, I've dated all over the uh, racial spectrum, shall we say. Um, quite literally, because the things that are, I find attractive over people are not just how they look. I mean, I wouldn't say no to a 6'4 Vin Diesel with Stephen Fry's brain, but... <sighs> yeah, that would be good. But, uh, you know, generally, uh, across the board. So yes, do I only like, old do I only like white men? No. Where did you get that from? So hot. Okay, I've tried to keep this to a YouTube-friendly length for a change. So I'm done. Uh, hopefully this has been somewhat interesting, uh, reasonably, uh, uh, well, not snore-inducing. I uh, hope you find it entertaining. If not, it's an effort. What can I say? <sighs> I don't have the time or the editing software to make it look any better than it does. So, enjoy. <laughs>